Good morning, my YouTube viewers. It is Crystal here. I'm just here this morning because I wanted to do another code review with you. And um, code review is going to be on a sickness data set. Uh, I uploaded the data set onto Kaggle. So you can go onto Kaggle and download the data set. So if you go into Kaggle here, it says sickness at work. This is how you how you get the data set. You go into data sets, and the way I did it is I did it your work, but you won't be able to do it under your work. But I did it under data set, and then you click onto the sickness at work, and that will enable you to download the data set. But if you want the data set, you go into data sets and you type in sickness at work and there you go it's right there sickness at work so you've got access to the data set so um, so now you know how you get the sickness at work data set that you can use on this code review we'll go ahead and commence with the code review and this is a data set that I put together myself concerning absence rates and then the data set is actually in percentage but I took the numbers out I took the percentage points out but it's actually percentage so if it says three it's actually three percent but I thought it was going to be too difficult to say 0 0.03 so I just said three but you need to know it's three percent so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import our libraries and we're going to after we created the program program was created in Google Colab because Google Colab is a free online Jupyter notebook hosted by Google it's a really great um, it's a really great um, platform because it's free and you don't have to pay for it and then you can use it anywhere because it's offline so then we go through our um, import our libraries we import pandas as pd pandas is a data processing library and then we got i got a message saying this one uh, function in pandas is deprecated and so you have to say pandas.util.testingSTM if you don't do that you'll get an error message saying that pandas has deprecated that so you just have to do that and then we import numpy as mp and numpy is performs numerical calculations and also um, creates numpy arrays and you can also do linear algebra with numpy and then um, we're going to import math. Math is an inbuilt library in Python, and it does like more complicated uh, functions such as square root. You need math to do the square root. And then we're going to import stats models API SSM. Stats models is going to be one of the um, one of the libraries that we're going to be using but we're going to be using stats models and profit because we're going to compare our stats models against profit we're going to be importing matplotlib which is a graphics library and it takes all the data points and puts them onto a graph so you can look at what you're you can see what you're working with and then we're going to take seaborn and that's a more sophisticated graphics library written on the back of Matplotlib and it does more sophisticated graphs. So after we have imported our libraries, what we're going to do is we're going to read the file. So I've already showed you the file. You can get the file at um, in Kaggle. So you don't have to worry about where you're going to find the file. You can either uh, download the the CSV file or you can work with the CSV file in Kaggle so you don't have to download it if you don't want to but ts equals pd dot read CSV in the file and then I said df equals ts dot copy 
Okay, configure dates and sickness. Okay, the problem that we have is that I made the database or the data set in Excel and the dates in Excel are not compatible with the dates in Python or if they are compatible I don't know how to get them to work so in order to do that I have to manipulate the date so df month equals df month dot string three that's taking off the three the first three characters of the data set of the cell df year equals df month dot string four and then what we're doing is we're taking the last two characters of the data set df year equals df month df month year equals df month plus 20 plus df year so that means we're converting it to a the, the year as four digits so now we're going to drop the month df sickness percent equals df sickness percent dot string negative one so we're going to take off the last character which is the percent df sickness equals df sickness dot as type float so we're going to make the sickness a float so that's how we manipulate configure our date and um sickness and i had to do that if there is a way that excel is compatible with python i don't know about it so that's what i had to do to get the dates to work so we convert date time make an index and a make index a date and drop unnecessary columns so df mon year equals pd to date time df mon year so what you're doing is you're converting that column to a date time ts equals df copy so ts is going to be equal df really df index equals pd to date time df mon year i made that in case i was going to need it at some point but I don't, I don't think I need it anymore, but we'll just leave it in there for the time being. And I might go back and delete it if um, it turns out I don't need it. Because when I was working on this problem, I was doing all kinds of things to try to get it to work. df.index equals df month year. df drop month year, month year, axis equals one, in place equals true ts drop month year x equals one in place equals true df shape ts shape so df shape we only have one column and ts shape we have two columns plot the graph so this is what the sickness rate looks like you can tell that um this started at covid during the covid pandemic so you had spikes of sickness because a lot of people were going off sick due to COVID. So that's why we have these spikes in sickness. Now we're going to do AS autocorrelation plot. And so that's just a test that you can do in stats models. We're going to do so let's just look here okay let's just see what it says it says autocorrelation so It says autocore from pandas is calling numpy 
core coefficient, while ACF from stats models is called a NumPy correlate. And then it just says the difference between the pandas and stats models version lie in the mean subtraction and normalization. Autocore does nothing more than passing subseries of the original series to NP core coefficient. Instead, this method, the same mean and same difference of these subseries are used to determine the correlation coefficient. AFC, in contrary, uses the overall series sample mean and sample variance to determine the correlation coefficient. So that's what it does, is it determines the correlation coefficient. So there we go, that's clear, you know. So you can see right here, it just, it just determines the correlation coefficient. And that was actually in pandas, but you can see it there. Now we're going to do seasonal compose. And what seasonal compose does is it breaks seasonal decompose. What seasonal decompose does is it breaks down the um, it breaks down the the trend and the seasons from the data set. So here you've got the observed data set. Here you've got the trend. Your trend is your long term. And here you've got your seasonal components. And your seasonal components are your short term. And then we've got the residual and the rest is noise. So now what we're going to do is we're going to check for stationarity. You want to see if the um, see if the data set is stationary. So we're going to be doing a Dickey Fuller test to check for stationarity. So this is it. This is the autocorrelation, partial autocorrelation. And then what we're going to do is we're going to remove seasonality. So we're going to do from statsmodels.tsa seasonal import seasonal decompose. So we're going to decompose the season from it. So that's another thing that you can do to your data set. You can do all these kind of things on stats models on your data set. And so I'm trying my best to learn stats models. So now what we're going to do is we're going to split the train in the test sets. X equals TS copy. Train size equals int lint X times point, 0 0.8. Train test equals X colon to train size, and then x train size to colon. So that means one of them gives you zero all the way up to the train size, and then the other one gives you train size all the way to the end. And then x train y train equals train dot i lock colon one train dot i lock colon zero. So that means train is your x train is your the first column and the y train is the zero column and it's the same thing with x test and then now what we do is we check our shapes of our x train y train x test y test to make sure it's correct now we're going to be doing a simple average and what we did was I tried very hard to find a model that I could get to work and the only model that I could get to work was simple average. And so that's what we're going to do with simple average. So y hat equals pd dot data frame x test copy. Simple average equals float df mean. y hat simple average equals simple average. y hat simple average equals y hat simple average. So I don't know how that happened, but okay. And so now what we do is we plot it. So you can see the uh, we you can see we've got the data frame, and you can see your x test is your blue, and your sorry your x train is your blue, and your x test is amber. 
and your simple average is green. So we're going to check the um, check the um, error. So you've got 5.47% error. And then we're going to do a data frame to compare our data frame, to compare our actual values against the predicted values. So one thing that we didn't get in here, which I'm not going to be able to do at the moment because I'm having problems with my uh, computer keep losing connectivity and I'm definitely going to have to get that sorted out at some point before I start making courses is um, it I didn't show the Y hat but your Y hat is 7.666 and that's your simple average so now what we're going to do is we're going to do FB profit and we're going to compare simple average to FB profit. So what we're going to do is we're going to plot the um, data set onto a graph and you can see we've got the X train and the X test on the graph. And then what we had to do was we had to take X train and X test, Y train and Y test, and we had to convert those to data frames. And then so train equals X train dot join Y train and test equals X test dot join Y test. And it has to be done as a data frame. So now we have to rename our columns because the way that it works in profit is the, prof the column numbers has to be a DS and Y. So we have to rename our columns DS and Y. And then so now what we do is we set the model up. Um, so model equals profit we from FD profit we have to import profit and model equals fit train and then so we set it up we trained it and fitted it and now we're going to predict predict on it test dot FCST equals model predict DF equals test so we predict on it and so what we're going to be looking for is Y at and so we've got our Y hat here. So now we plot it on a graph so you can see the prediction. And now what we're going to do is we're going to plot, plot the components of the model so you can see the trend and you can see the yearly. So you can see the trend and you can see the yearly. So now we're going to plot the forecast with the actual values. And now we're going to check the RMSC, that's your error. And so your error is 8%. So the error that you got on profit was more than the error that you got with the simple average. So that indicates that um, Profit didn't do as good a job. It looked pretty, it looks great, it looks fantastic on the graph, but with regard to the error message, the error was better with simple average than it was with profit. And so we check our Y hat, so you can see what your Y hat is, and then we take our data frame and we test our actual values against the predicted values and I don't know why it did that but it came up with two two pictures of the data frames but I can't do anything about that right now because my computer has lost its connectivity and so I'm going to have to turn my computer off and turn it back on and see if I can get it back up because it's been doing it since yesterday 
and it's going to be problematic for me whenever I want to um, make my course, which I'm going to be making my course. So that's it for this code review. We did a code review and we compared um, the simple average to profit. And then when we compared the simple average to the profit, we could see that the profit was not didn't perform as well as a simple average. So in this instance, steps models performed better. So I'm going to go ahead and conclude this code review and I'm going to have to turn my computer off and turn it back on and see if I can get my internet connection back up because I really need it. And um, I would like to thank all of my subscribers for supporting my channel. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching this video and I look forward to making more videos for you in the future.